how are normal people supposed to live with these prices? How? And I genuinely, I just wanted to ask, I mean, a normal working person, people work paycheck to paycheck, working people, how are they supposed to live with prices like this? And he told me, just flat out, he has a way of doing that. He said, well, son, they're not. They're not going to. Life's going to change for millions and millions of people. And I thought about that. I thought about that when I saw Joe Biden get up to the podium and tell you how great things are. Because of the enormous progress we've made on the economy, the Americans can tackle inflation from a position of strength. It's still a problem. We can tackle it from a position of strength. The purpose uh, and that we've set out to accomplish and the progress we've made, I think, is critical. At the time I took office, about 16 months ago, the economy had stalled and COVID was out of control. Today, thanks to the economic plan and the vaccination plan that my administration put in action, America has achieved the most robust recovery in modern history. Most robust recovery in history. Now, set, set everything else aside. Set every, we're not even going to talk about you, or we're not going to talk about me right now. Let's talk about Rust Belt swing voters. The person who doesn't really pay attention to politics, he's not watching I'm Right as we speak. Normal voters. What do you think goes through the normal voter's head when he fills up his vehicle and he gets mad, like I got mad last night, and he goes home and he hears the president on television not presenting a plan for why those prices are about to go down. He hears the president on television telling him how good he has it. What level of anger is this fostering in various places in the United States of America? Honestly, I have said it before. I have said it. I'll, I'll say it again. And there are a lot of words you could use to describe the Biden administration. The one I keep coming back to is cold. How could you be so cold? Even if you don't care, how can you not know that families right now, they're delaying retirement. Families right now are going through budgets. I shouldn't pick up a piece of paper. Everyone does it on their phone now. Families are going through budgets and they're figuring out what they can cut out of their lives, meaning American families are watching their standard of living decrease. Children out there, you, you, you think this isn't a big deal? I'm telling you, I have kids, it's a big deal. Kids, Ma, mom, dad, are, are we going to see Uncle Frank this year? We always go up and see him in Idaho and go fishing. And mom and dad are having to look Aiden, Jaden, and Braden in the eye and they're having to say, no, I'm sorry, boys. We can't, we can't afford it this year, I'm sorry. When you have conversations like that with your children and then you hear the President of the United States of America get up and tell you how great things are, that's going to create a level of resentment and bitterness that I don't think these people fully realize. They're just so cold. And they all seem to be out of touch. You see this interview? Local news with people at the pump? Check this out. Gas prices are they're killing us. It just took me $150 to fill up. We're spending roughly like maybe $500 every two weeks for gas. I'm trying to get a second job, uh, especially my wife being pregnant. We just want to stay home and, and not drive as much. Uh, good, right? So what's happening? Well, since that interview, gas prices have already risen five cents again per gallon. It's not that they've even stabilized. It's not that they're high. It's that they're high as Hunter Biden and they continue to go up and up and up. And the White House seems to have a two-pronged strategy for telling you what's going on in the world when you're watching your standard of living go down. One, they're going to tell you it's not actually going down. Two, they're going to tell you, well, it is going down, but it's Putin's fault. I do want to say, you look, you know, if you look at um, uh, what happened when Putin started amassing troops on the border with Russia, the price of gas has increased by a dollar and fifty-one cents. Again, so cold. Now, I understand these people are political people. They're politicians. I understand that they're not going to sit up there and say, ah, I screwed up with my green energy nonsense, stopping all this domestic oil production. Hey, my fault. Totally apologize. This is on me. I'll get it fixed. I know we're never going to hear that. I'm not naive. But believe me, White House, when I tell you people don't want to hear how good they have it, 
and they don't want to hear, it's Putin's fault. We have all the charts, by the way. We have the statistics about when gas prices began to increase. It's right there in black and white. These are facts. These are not opinions. These are facts. We know what happened. And again, the craziest thing about it is one of the reason I'm one of the reasons I'm so cynical about where we are and where we're headed economically in this country. It's because they're not even trying to solve the problem. They're not even pretending the problem can be solved. What is actually still on the table, though, to bring gas prices down? The president is asking for Congress and others for potential ideas. But as you say, the reality is uh, that there isn't very much more to be done. That's, of course, a lie. Everyone knows what there is to be done. Everybody. You know. I know. What are you saying? Drill for more oil. The one thing that can bring down gas prices, though, is the one thing these people won't do. Not that they can't do it. They could, they could do it tomorrow. They could tell the green lobby to go stuff it, and they could do it tomorrow, but they won't do it. Why won't they do it, though? I mean, it doesn't make sense. It's going to hurt his presidency. They're going to lose all these seats at the midterms. Why won't they just do it? Why not just, why not just drill for oil, bite the bullet? Why not just do it? Well, again, we always have to understand, and I know this is hard to accept. I know it is. It sucks. We have to understand the destruction is intentional. They're not looking at your standard of living dropping by the day and saying to themselves, oh, oh, I feel so bad. How can we help them? They're looking at your standard of living going away and they're saying to themselves, finally, gosh, these carbon producing peasants, about time we got them knocked down. These, these people are still out there trying to tell you to buy an electric vehicle. Electric school buses and electric vehicles in general are the future. By 2030, 50% of the vehicles we make in America will be electric. And by 2035, all vehicles we make in America will be electric. We think that the future is electric no matter what. Yeah, um, except where's the electricity coming from? And we act as if that's kind of a solution. On top of the average price of an electric vehicle being well north of $50,000, so you're telling the normal person who can't afford the gas to go spend $50,000 on a vehicle, well, let's talk about that electricity. Those prices are up too, between 77 and 233%, those prices are up. Again, they know all these things. I want to make sure I always am reminding you of this and reminding myself of this. When I present these facts to you, these statistical truths, I mean, they can't be argued, right? These are facts. Price was this, it's that. Price is this, it's that. These are facts. They know that too. As dumb as these people can be, they, they have the numbers too. They're looking at all of them. Oh, oh, gas price is way up. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Uh, electric price is way up. Okay. They know. They don't care. Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History. Che Guevara, the latest episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.